Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. Now today's video is one that I've been planning on recording for a, about a week and a half now, something like that, and I figured I would at least get it done by the end of next week, but then as I was getting ready for bed, you know, I do what I do every night before bed, I start scrolling through my news feed, maybe get caught up on any articles I want to check out, and then I saw a news, or actually a blog post, on the Ubuntu official blog recommending that all Windows 7 refugees switch to Linux. It got me fired up. I figured I need to make this video right now. Not only is it a hot topic, I just need to basically get my opinion out there. And it's going to be a strong opinion that might surprise you guys, but I have to be honest. You know, I love Linux. You know that. I have a YouTube channel dedicated to it, obviously. I've written books. You know, there's a lot of people out there that are passionate about Linux, but you probably won't meet very many that are as passionate about it as I am. And my opinion is simple, it's firm, but it comes out of love, I promise. My opinion is this, you should never recommend Linux to everybody. You should never recommend that everybody remove their current operating system and run Linux. Now, don't get me wrong, I would love it if everyone ran Linux. That would be great, but I have to be realistic. And I think that's what's important when you recommend Linux to another person is that you be realistic. And I understand, you know, like I said, a lot of people are passionate about Linux. They want to tell their friends about it. They want to tell their family members about it. It's this great operating system. Actually, it's a kernel, but they'll call it an operating system. And they'll talk about how great it is and that everyone should use it it's free. You can put it on your computer. You don't have to pay for it. You just install it in place. You'll live happily ever after. It'll do your dishes for a week. It'll walk your dog for a month. It'll cut your expenses down by 50%. Actually, the, the rest of that, they no one says that. But it's almost like they think that um, Linux is going to solve everyone's problems. And, you know, to some extent, I do agree. It's a great platform and everyone should check it out. But should you just blindly install Linux on top of your existing operating system? No. And should any company, Canonical, the makers of Ubuntu, or anyone else, recommend that everybody replace Windows 7 with Linux? Absolutely not. And, you know, this isn't really a new thing with me because, you know, they've done this before when Windows XP was, you know, going through the same thing when support on that ended. They recommended that everyone install Linux. But it comes down to this. When you recommend Linux to another person, then in order to do it right, you have to know that it's compatible. Now, I will argue that the Linux platform, of you know, your average Linux distribution, I'll use Ubuntu as an example because that's basically the, the main one, or maybe not the main one, but it's one of the most popular. And the fact is people will recommend people install Ubuntu. Now, when you do that, you always need to do research First, either you encourage the person you are recommending check out Linux to do that research or you do it for them. But to tell them to blindly install Linux, don't. You can ask for their model number. You can look it up for them. You can look at all the components that their desktop or laptop comes with for the hardware. You can make sure that it's compatible. And then at that point, if it is compatible and there's no ma major issues or known compatibility quirks, you can probably recommend that they install Linux and most likely they'll have a good time. I think some arbitrary number like 70 or 80% of PC hardware is supported by Linux, but there's no such thing as 100% compatibility. So let's go ahead and take a look at the article that I am referring to. I'll go ahead and switch the camera over here to my laptop. And what you should see on the screen right now is that article. And, you know, the whole point of this is not to shame the individual that wrote this. I will not say that person's name. They're, they're on here. Obviously, you see that person on the screen. But I'm, I don't want this to be directed toward that individual because there's other people that are saying the same thing. This is not specific to the Ubuntu blog. It is surprising that Ubuntu's blog would say this because they really should know better. But, you know, this general opinion that Linux is this magical thing that you can install on every computer. I mean, that's, that's everywhere, but we have to be realistic. So let's take a look at this. So already, basically, the article is saying what we already know at the very beginning, that Windows 7 has reached end of its life. 
We know that. It, it's no longer supported, as I mentioned. And there's two options here. So, for example, option number one, right here, buy a new computer running another operating system. I mean, that's a good recommendation right there. I mean, you can go to System76, Zareason. Those are two companies that sell Linux-powered computers. There are also other companies, I forgot the name of, that sell cheaper Linux computers as well. So, I mean, those aren't the only places you can get those things. I think Tux Machines is one. Um, you know, again, it's late. Um, I'm tired, but they, they do exist. There's a lot of vendors out there that go through the compatibility. They make sure that it works, and you can buy it from them, and you can be reasonably sure that you'll have a good experience. So, I, you know, I agree with that. But what I have a problem with is number two. This option right here, it says, install Linux on any computer you like, emphasis mine. In this blog, we're talking about the Linux option, specifically Ubuntu. But he's saying, install Linux on any computer you like. This is what I have a problem with. This is what needs to stop. Anybody in the Linux community that recommends that Linux be installed blindly on someone's computer is doing an immense disservice to the Linux community. They need to stop doing that. So what's the harm in that? I mean, why is it so bad that somebody recommend that everyone install Linux? Well, you know, the thing is there's two scenarios that could play out here. Scenario A, someone tries Linux per the recommendation. It works great. They have an awesome experience. They transform their computing. They love it. And then from that point on, they're a part of the Linux community. They've been converted and live happily ever after. That's the type of story that I like to hear. It makes me feel good when someone jumps on the platform that I like and then they have a good time with it. But scenario B is they could try Ubuntu per this recommendation. And maybe Ubuntu isn't compatible with a video card on their computer. Maybe the sound card isn't detected. Maybe the network or especially wireless card doesn't work. They have a bad experience. They get angry and then they hate Linux. They don't understand that it's not the fault of Linux that it doesn't work on their computer. They were told it works on everything or install it on any computer and then they go and do it. And then they get upset because it doesn't work right on their specific hardware. And then they never try Linux again. They hate it. They're gone. They will never come back. We've permanently lost a potential member of the Linux community. That's the damage that can be done here. And that's why I think it's a disservice to the community to blindly recommend Linux. So let's continue with the article. Now, I'm going to scroll down a bit here. I'm not going to read this entire article. And here it's basically telling people how to get Ubuntu. Right here, the article mentions, you can install Ubuntu on a computer you already have. And now we get back to my main issue. It doesn't say, check the compatibility to make sure that Ubuntu will work on your computer and then go ahead and switch to it. It doesn't say run Ubuntu in live mode and, and check that everything works first before installing. It says no. You could just go ahead and install it. No, guys, please stop that. We need to stop that because we're going to have people try to run Linux on computers that can't and give them a negative experience. We can't tell people this. Canonical, please, why? I mean, I can kind of understand if it was somebody that has just started out with Linux and they're just so crazy in love with it, they want to tell everybody to install it. But this is coming from Canonical. They should know better. And I'm a fan of Canonical. I'm a fan of Ubuntu. I, I love it. But this just really, really makes me sad that they would actually say something like this and not at least tell people to verify compatibility or try it in live mode first. It also says that this can be difficult if you haven't done it before, but there are tutorials available. Now, I did click on the link and I basically browsed it. I looked for anything that was telling people to verify compatibility. I didn't see that. Um, and, they mentioned, and they mentioned an upcoming blog series. We'll walk you through how to do it. I hope that they're going to give everyone that disclaimer. 
Um, I mean, of course, you can buy a computer pre-installed with Ubuntu if you'd like. We already know that. Dell offers computers with Ubuntu installed. That's true. I already mentioned Zarezen and System76. And there are others that will give you a computer that does run Linux and the compatibility was verified. So that definitely is a valid option. Now, the third option I have some issue with here. It says you can also install Ubuntu in a virtual environment. Now, that's not as bad as the first point, but it's still somewhat bad. And that's because Ubuntu doesn't run well in a virtual environment. It runs okay now. It's not as bad as it was. To be completely fair, they have made some code changes. They have made some improvements. It does work better in a virtual environment nowadays, but you're going to lose a lot of speed because the GNOME desktop, as great as it is, as much as I love it, it's really not optimized to run well in a virtual machine. I would argue if you want to be on the Ubuntu platform, and run it in a virtual machine, you should probably try Zubuntu, which runs XFCE. Ubuntu Mate is a good choice. Ubuntu Mate even has um, the ability to recognize that it's running in a virtual machine if you connect to it you know, via like VNC or something like that. So there's other options on the Ubuntu platform, but the overhead of GNOME means you will lose some performance. And that might make somebody think that Ubuntu is extremely sluggish. To be fair, when you install Ubuntu on a really good machine, or it doesn't even have to be a good machine, but something that's not more than five or six years old, new versions of Ubuntu will generally run very fast if it's compatible. You know, there I, I gave you that um, you know, asterisk again, if it's compatible. It'll run really well and really fast on a computer, but try putting it in a virtual machine. And I don't know exactly how much percent of performance you'll lose, I could guess at least 15% or more, it's going to run sluggish and give people a negative experience. So no, don't recommend people run Ubuntu in a virtual machine. That should be one of the last things you recommend because, you know, again, it's it has some overhead that'll make it run pretty sluggish and somebody might not want to run Linux anymore if they feel like it's a slow operating system. That might not work out too well. So the summary is basically concluding that if you know someone that's still running Windows 7, maybe somebody you know personally, um, a, a business owner you might know, let them know that Windows 7 is um, basically going to possibly leave their system exposed because it doesn't get any security updates anymore. Now, obviously, that depends on there being security exploits running in the wild that are targeting that. I'm sure that's going to happen at some point. That is true, but then again, there are a few options to take, one of which is Ubuntu. Again, here we are blindly recommending Ubuntu. Nobody should do this. We have to research the compatibility ourselves before we make that recommendation, or we could tell the person that Ubuntu is a possibility. Maybe it could be worded like, you know, you should check out Ubuntu, and you could research if it has compatibility for your hardware. It has a live mode you can use where you can demo it before you install it. You can check things to make sure it works right. And if everything works, then you can consider installing it. But again, here we are blindly recommending Ubuntu, which we should never do. Now, at the end of the day, what it all comes down to is what does the sticker say on your computer? Does it say designed for Windows? If it does, we really don't have any reasonable expectation to think that Ubuntu or any other Linux distribution is going to work well on it. It very well could, and most often it does, but it might not. And again, we shouldn't blindly recommend that to just everybody. If the sticker says designed for Windows, then that means that the manufacturer of that computer has only tested compatibility on Windows and makes no guarantee that it'll work on any other operating system. And anybody in this industry knows there's no such thing as 100% compatibility. So we just have to be careful when we make this recommendation. Again, we could do the research for the individual. We can encourage them to do it. But blindly recommending that Windows 7 refugees just jump ship and immediately wipe their operating system and install Ubuntu. That has to stop, guys. The Linux community needs to cut that out because we're doing nobody any favors. 
I know that's a strong opinion, but I need to call it like I see it, and that's based on my experience where I've tried Linux on many computers. I have tried switching people to it, and some have been successful, some have not. It all depends on compatibility and how much work you do in the research. So what do you guys think about that? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. And in the meantime, let's definitely recommend the Linux platform, but let's just do so in a very smart, well thought out and researched way. Because if we do it that way, we can have a better chance at providing a good experience for someone, help them through it, hold their hand, help them research it, just make it a good experience for them. But we certainly should not advertise Ubuntu or any other distro as a drop-in replacement for anything. That's a pet peeve of mine, and I definitely think the community should stop. So I will see you guys in another video. I, I literally have three videos on my hard drive right now that I'm editing. I have a lot of content to get out to you guys. So stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I will be back with a new video very soon. Thanks for checking out my video. I really appreciate it. If you found it useful, click that like button. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe so you'll see the latest content as soon as it becomes available. If you want to help me out, there's links down below for my Patreon page, as well as links for purchasing my Linux books and also my affiliate store, which has a listing of Linux compatible hardware that I've actually tested personally. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.